following is a digital media production. Find your voice. Hey, fantasy football fans. It's finally opening week of the NFL regular season. FanDuel's back with fantasy football for the everyday fan. New contests start every week. No more busted seasons. This year, there's an upgraded experience. You can try beginner contests for new players only. Settle a score with a friend in a head-to-head contest. Even play for a dollar. There are choices for every budget. Pick a contest, choose your team, watch your score in real time. Try FanDuel now and get up to $50 in free entries. New users who deposit will get five free entries to NFL 50-50 Beginner Contest, valued at up to $50. You'll get one free entry a week for five weeks. The value of free entries depends on deposited amounts. Go to FanDuel.com, click the Join Now button, and use my promo code MMQB. That's FanDuel.com, promo code MMQB, void where prohibited. Hello, I'm Peter King, and welcome to the MMQB podcast with Peter King, where I take you inside the minds of the biggest influencers in the NFL. This week, one of my favorite interviews in the NFL, defensive lineman Michael Bennett of the Seattle Seahawks, and the guy I call the David Ortiz of the NFL, Vince Wilfork of the Houston Texans. By the way, Wilfork knows Big Poppy. And I think you're going to like my conversation with him as well. But first, Michael Bennett. You know, no football player that I know of ever dispenses political advice more freely than Michael Bennett. I think he's been super disrespectful in the fact that, you know, it's okay to talk about a person's political views, but not to attack the way they look and what they're about. Don't vote for Trump. And Vince Wilfork. What exactly did you learn in all those years playing with Tom Brady? The best quarterback in the game. I got a chance to watch him work in practice, and he never took a day lightly. He never took it for granted. I mean, it's a reason he's that good. My conversations with Michael Bennett and Vince Wilfork in a moment, and later in the show, I'll be back with a few thoughts on what's already shaping up to be one of the weirdest years of the 32 years that I've ever covered the National Football League. Now, let's take you to Renton, Washington, home of the Seattle Seahawks, to my conversation with outspoken defensive lineman Michael Bennett. So I'm here at the Seattle Seahawks training facility in Renton, Washington. I'm with Michael Bennett, defensive end, Seattle Seahawks. One of the reasons I wanted to have Michael on the podcast is that he says things. And he doesn't say things that he doesn't mean, but... He also means everything that he says, and I just thought it would be fun to have you on, and welcome to the podcast. Oh, thank you. Thank you, America. Thank you. (laughs) Thank you, America. If Donald Trump is getting votes, I figure I can get some votes, too, so let's do this. Well, as long as you started with Donald Trump now, let's talk about Bernie Sanders and your support of Bernie Sanders through this whole political process. Why, and were you ultimately... Mildly disappointed or very disappointed that he lost? I was very disappointed. I was hoping that he became the vice president because I felt like some of his views would be better for vice president suited because I felt like his social issues and things he thought and things he's walked with Dr. King. He's done so many great things. And it was it was one of those things where I felt like it was time for a person to be in office once again to really get people back to understanding that it's OK to be different and, and you can accept of other people's different and respect people's culture. I thought it was time to get back to that. I think that for a while we started to judge other people for the things and how they look, the way that they smell, the things that they ate, how they dressed, the religion that they were part of. And I felt like he was kind of going into the away from that. It was more of he was going to like accept everybody and let's and let's just live together and create something super positive. What have you thought as you have watched this presidential election, the whole process go forward? And what have you thought of, I don't know, maybe the coarsening of the dialogue between Donald Trump and his opponents? I think I think I think he's been super disrespectful in the fact that, you know, it's okay to be to talk about a person's political views, but not to attack the way they look and what they're about, you know. So, you know, him talking to that Muslim family and telling them that they all about that and him 
making us feel like we should attack somebody because they look a Muslim or they're a part of the Muslim culture. I thought that was pretty ignorant. And I thought that, you know, him saying that he wants to make America great again when everything he does, all his businesses outside of America from his clothes and the things that he does. And I think I think that is something that I've just really disliked. I thought that his dialogue should be more about how to truly make America great. And I think America is different. If you watch the Olympics, you know, and I was explaining to my daughter because she was like, Daddy, Daddy, how come every other country, every Everybody looks exactly alike. And I was telling her that that's what makes America great. It's so many different people from around the world and so many people from different cultures. And, and, and we're able to come together and, and form a whole different type of society. And I thought that was pretty interesting. You are pretty much a multicultural family in yourself, yeah. your family, You're born in California, live in Hawaii, and uh, your wife is Samoan. Yeah. And so... What is your message to your kids about different cultures? Well, for my kids, I, I love traveling. So I try to get my kids to travel around the world to see what how different the world is. I think a lot of times people get stuck in their environment. And because they're in their environment, they tend to forget that there's something outside of them. You know, for a while, people thought the world was square. You know what I mean? And and that's just how it is. Or when flat. You, or flat. You know what I mean? It's just like if, you, if you're in there, you, you that's all you see. So when you get kids out to understand that there's different people around the world, they do things differently, and it's okay. And it's okay to like what they're doing. You don't have to get stuck in your way because you think your way is perfect. And try different things. And that's all my whole philosophy with my family. And my whole philosophy growing up in Texas and, you know, and living and spending a lot of time in Louisiana and coming out to just seeing the whole world and just want to be a part of it and loving the different things that people have. You know, for a long time, I thought I loved only loved Cajun food. Then I started getting out. And I'm like, well, I like sushi. Oh, I like Indian, too. I like Moroccan. Food. You know what I mean? So it's like it's one of those things where you just got to get out and travel. And I think the human being is a, a nomadic being and we're supposed to go around the world. We're supposed to view different things. We're supposed to do it. And that's what makes us so unique. I take it you don't want to build a wall between the United States and Mexico. No, I would never do that. I think a lot of times, you know, we forget about the work that the people that they do. You know, there's the Spanish people. They do so much work for us that a lot of people would not do. And and you got to have respect for that. And the way that I grew up in Texas, so I had a lot of Spanish friends. I know sometimes their family, the things that goes on in Mexico, they want to get here. They want to feel a chance to have freedom. It's, you know, it's a difference between America. There's a lot of things that I feel like America doesn't have, but I feel like America truly has that. The ability to let you have the opportunity. And I think that's all that people want is the ability to have opportunity. How have you in your career this year, I think your eighth year right in the NFL, how through here and through college football, this is a very regimented game. Yeah. It's a very much get in line yeah. game. So how have you been able to maintain the personality that you have maintained? Obviously, it's a, it's a challenge because – the way that this game is made is, you know, it's built like the military. You can't get sick. You can't get injured. You never, there's never, you never injure. You always have to be ready. And I tend to think that a lot of people fall victim to not finding out who they truly are. And, and that's the real problem. A lot of people think that, oh, athletes lose themselves. I think they never knew themselves. So it's hard to lose yourself when you never knew yourself. So it's one of those things where I've, I've always wanted to be like, man, I want to be who I am all the time and not succumb to what somebody else thinks I should be or society thinks an athlete should be. You know, I stick true to to my morals and I think integrity is one thing that I want to always have and I think that's hard to do in a sport like this because fans want you to be a certain way coaches want you to be a certain way society wants you to be a certain way it's just Twitter but I stay true to what I think is me and what I think is right in all your years in football have you ever thought of not playing because it's a conformist game no, I, I've always thought you could always – I grew up around a lot of people that always created their niche in something, and I'm just creating my niche in this league. And, and I know that people want you to challenge it. I, I feel like there is a group of fans and a group of people that want to hear that politically correct answer, and most of those people are the people that's creating the brands and people that are creating, like, the marketing things. But I think the true fan wants to hear the real side of the athlete or the real side of whoever it is that they're paying attention to, whoever that they love. And I think I bring that to the fans, and I think – I bring that to society. I think my fans are the people who are like, man, like he's just being himself. He's at least he's giving us something other than the answer that they're supposed to say. This is the MMQB podcast. podcast. A quick question for my listeners. How would you like to get three home cooked meals for free? Well, all you have to do is remember these four letters. They are after all the most important four letters on planet earth. MMQB. That's easy enough, right? 
Now keep listening and I'll tell you how to get those free meals. Look, we all know there's nothing better than a great home-cooked meal. And no one makes it easier to do that than Blue Apron. Their mission is to make incredible home cooking accessible to everyone. Blue Apron knows that when you cook with incredible ingredients, you make incredible meals. They set the highest quality standards for their suppliers and only bring you the best ingredients, all right to your door. Be sure to check out the great meals available during the month of September. You're not going to be disappointed. Now comes the freebie part. That's what I was telling you about before, three free meals. So check out this week's menu and get your first three meals free, including free shipping, by going to blueapron.com slash MMQB. Think about it, three meals free just by adding in MMQB. Blueapron.com slash MMQB. You'll love how good it feels and tastes to create incredible home-cooked meals with Blue Apron. Please do not wait. Once again, that's blueapron.com slash MMQB. Blue Apron, it's just a better way to cook. This is Adrian Wojnarowski of The Vertical for candid conversations with the biggest names around the NBA. Be sure to check out our podcast network, which includes The Vertical Podcast with Woj, The Vertical Podcast with J.J. Redick, and The Vertical Podcast with Chris Mannix, all at thevertical.com, iTunes, or wherever you listen to podcasts. Peter King here on the Peter King Podcast with Michael Bennett of the Seattle Seahawks. Michael, you are sort of famous in football for living life and living the life that you want to live outside of football. You live in Hawaii. (laughs) What's it like for an NFL player to live in Hawaii? Are there many of them? Who live in Hawaii? There's a couple. It's like eight, seven, eight, but most of them are Polynesian. I think I'm like the only African American player out there. Why so. did you choose Hawaii? I'm like I'm a real like spiritual person, and I, I like I went to Italy and I didn't feel that vibe. But when I like when I went to Hawaii, I felt this vibe of calmness and this vibe of this is where I'm supposed to be at this moment in my life, and and I loved it. I love that that peace of mind feeling, and you don't get that everywhere. It's a lot of places that you visit that you don't really feel like you should be there, and I thought Hawaii was a place that I felt that I was supposed to be. I love the ocean. I love the way that the water makes me feel. I love being a part of the culture. I love I love everything that Hawaii offers, and that's the reason why I wanted to live there. And, you know, growing up in Texas, it's kind of like I felt like I outgrew what there was to offer me, you know, the things that we I was used to going. It's just the same old thing all the time, man, to try something different. Like I said, like my plans, like uh, I'm planning a trip right now. Like, I'm, I mean, I plan on living in Africa for a while. So it's one of those things where it's like I feel like I'm supposed to travel and I'm supposed to be in a place that's different from the norm. I've been to South Africa. I was over there for the World Cup in 2010. And now that is really a unique place. Because you go from Soweto to Cape Town yeah. to Johannesburg. I mean, there's murders on the streets in Johannesburg. It's just common. Yeah. And I always have thought, and you talked about Italy. I've been to Italy three or four times. And it's like what John Madden once said about the United States. He said, it's amazing how it all works. Yeah. People want to live in Kearney, Nebraska. And people want to live in La Jolla, California. And people want to live in Bangor, Maine. And there's people to populate the whole thing. Yeah. And so it, it all works. So everybody has sort of their niche. You sort of sound like you feel your niche is a little bit of everywhere. Yeah, I, I was talking to my dad. Actually, my dad got mad at me because I said, Dad, I don't believe that I'm supposed to live in one spot forever. I was like, Dad, I think well, I'm, I'm going to live in Africa for a while. And I'm going to live in, I might live in Japan for a while. And he's just like, you know, he, he's going to just live around. I said, Dad, I'm like, I truly believe that a human being is supposed to experience other cultures and experience society from a different point of view. Like, if my whole life if I'm just comfortable in where I've been, how am I supposed to find out what it feels like to be uncomfortable and then figure out what it feels like to understand somebody else's ideas and understand some of this culture so I just feel like I'm supposed to do that and I think I, I wish more people I think when people travel they tend to have a more of a sensibility of what what it is to be different and what it is to be somebody else's culture being unique and not thinking that just because what they do is you unfamiliar with it doesn't make sense and I think that's why I love traveling. Michael you uh, also have been known the last year or so for there's a lot of people in the outside world who say Michael Bennett should hold out He's not making enough money. 
and you have chosen not to hold out. I'm sure you would like more money in your contract, but why have you chosen to not walk away instead of honoring the terms of your contract? Well, for me, it's one of those things where I know what type of influence that I have on my team. 